Hi, this is Dave Windhorst, visual effects artist currently based out of Vancouver. Uh, today I'd like to cover a tutorial on how to install customized Python scripts and gizmos into the Nuke interface, thus extending our nodes menu such that we can quickly access uh, our scripts and commands rather than using the typical file import or the script editor. Uh, just for those who are wondering, I'm currently using 6.3 version 8, which is the most recent build created by the Foundry. And before I continue any farther, this tutorial is in no means a fully in-depth feature on uh, creating customized Python scripts, but rather uh, I felt it was necessary to show uh, how my resource files are available on my website, uh, how they're delivered, and essentially how you would install them, as well as just to provide some tips and tricks I've found over the years from creating customized uh, Python scripts for Nuke. So let's get started. Uh, first thing uh, we want to take a look at is what comes in a typical pack for Python. Uh, the scripts that I will be uploading to my website come into a, in a zip folder that when extracted, besides the readme file you would receive, uh, we've got a couple uh, files and folders here. So the first we have icons, which when we go into that has the image icons uh, for the commands. We also have our Python, which this is the actual Python file that we'll be using to call our commands from. And then we've got an init.py and a menu.py file, and I'll explain those later as to why they're important. So uh, first things first, we need to find our .nuke file. And the reason why I say that uh, we need to find that is because you're probably tempted to install new Python scripts and plugins inside the nuke software plugin folder and your program folders. Uh, even though this is correct and can be used, uh, when working in a company, uh, the one thing I found is you're, you're dealing with software that an IT has to work with, so they're constantly updating. And the thing is with, with Nuke especially, your plugins folder is specific to that software version. So if you're updating constantly or you change file uh, your Nuke version, you would have to co basically copy everything from your plugins folder of your original one into the new one and it just gets to be a little tedious. Uh, another issue is when you're working on a network or with uh, others using the same workstation as yourself, uh, they may have something customized to their needs and you may have something customized to your needs. So by using your local or personal profile uh, .nuke folder instead of the software folder you can essentially keep these from conflicting with someone else's as well as still keeping your customized uh, look just for you. So again, where do we find this? Uh, there's a couple ways we can find that in Nuke. Um, the easiest and most uh, readily way is by just hitting a R for our read file. So I'm just calling up a read file. And if I go over here where it says home, typically uh, if you click on this, uh, you won't see anything listed here because it's a hidden file, but if you type a period, you'll notice we now have a .nuke folder available. And that's, this is essentially where my local personal profile .nuke folder is located, so C drive users Dave. So it could be the same for you, it could be different if you're running uh, Mac or Linux. Um, again, that's using the, the home method in the read dialog box. The other way is a little more hidden, and that's by, you, you have to call up the script editor, and inside the script editor, we have to type in nuke.plugin path. When we run that, it'll essentially tell us where uh, all loot nuke is currently listening for all of its uh, commands. So right here, we have C drive users dave.nuke. And we could type in here, you know, nuke.plugin uh, add path and essentially add on. Uh, to look at another folder directory. The problem we run into there is this is only uh, session specific. So th what I mean by that is as soon as you close out a nuke and restart, uh, it'll no longer be looking there. You'd have to come into the script editor and re-enter that information. So instead, what we can do is we can create a file that when nuke initializes, it looks to that file in order to import any instructions or commands before loading up the rest of the interface. And the reason why I say initialize is because that's where we receive the name, the init.py file. So if we open up that .py file, you can just open it up in a text editor. 
uh, you can see I've provided three lines. So nuke.plugin add path. So we're adding a gizmos folder, a Python folder, and an icons folder. And these are all based on relative location to the .nuke folder. So uh, to go and show this to you, I've gone to my local profile. I found my .nuke folder. If I go inside of that, you can see I have a gizmos file, a Python folder, and an icons folder. And those all correspond to there. So if I go drop down in my gizmos, this is where I would place all my gizmo files. If I go back up, my icons, all my image icons are located here. Go back up, and then in my Python, this is where I contain all my Python scripts. So you can see they're all fairly easy to navigate once you know where to look for that .nuke folder. It's easy to, to place all those there. So uh, that's our, dot, our init.py file. Uh, then then uh, once we've created this, Nuke now knows where it needs to look, but now we need to tell Nuke what to look for. So we create a menu.py folder. And what that basically is, is it just contains a list of instructions for creating or manipula manipulating the interface of Nuke before fully loading. Um, we can add menus, add uh, formats for uh, our images and everything, and create extra toolbars. So here we first are importing, we need to import the Python script we are looking for. So if you remember, the Python script available to us under Python is this DW global directory read setup. So I've imported that. I've called up a simple command in order to create a toolbar uh, specifically for the nodes menu. And then I've given it a name. And then I've added three commands to the um, menu that derive from that Python script I've been using. So there's the Python script, and these are the commands it's calling from inside that. Um, I've also associated some shortcut hotkeys, as well as the image uh, icon that's respective to its type. So we can just make it easier to tell the difference. Um, the nice thing is, because I've already set this up for you, all you have to do is either install this menu.py file and menu file inside of your .nuke folder, or if you already have an init and a menu file, uh, Python file, you can just copy and paste these and add them to your existing files. Uh, I definitely recommend include making a backup of those if you already have some, just in case. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's fairly easy to comment them out if you're having trouble. So once we've done that, I'm going to use my existing, this is my existing menu.py file. So I'm going to comment back in those menus. So you can see I've also, I have two different menus going on here and how I've associated them. So I can save off my menu.py file. And if I go back over to Nuke, you notice that nothing's changed, and that's because we're still in the existing session. So we need to force restart Nuke. And now that I've restarted Nuke, you can see that upon loading, it's created a new button down here in the nodes, and it's created a new menu set, including the three commands that I've created. And now if I click on them, I can create them, and I can also use the shortcut key. You can see nothing selected. And there are my plugins readily accessible from this menu. Uh, just in case if you do run into errors uh, when Nuke starts up, if there is anything wrong with your Python script, your init.py file, or your menu.py file, you will run an error. Nuke will come up and say, I cannot you know, complete this task. There's an error it found in one of your scripts. Uh, Nuke will not be able to start up past that once it's hit that error. So uh, you must either fix your Python script or just comment that one out of the menu.py file to get past it at least, just to debug it um, in order to use Nuke again. So that's basically it. Uh, that's all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Uh, I will be covering in a later tutorial this actual directory pack and how it is actually to be used. Uh, for your read setups and uh, hopefully uh, this is able to get you started in learning Python or at least extending your Nuke interface and workflow 
uh, with custom scripts and gizmos and how to easily add them to your interface so if you have any questions or comments uh, you know you can post below or email me and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible uh, hopefully you enjoyed this and uh, talk to you later so have a good one